There are two primary formats for the income statement. The single step income statement, which you're already familiar with, and the multi-step income statement, which we will learn about in this podcast. The single step income statement lists all revenues together and totals them for total revenue. Then all expenses are listed together and totaled for total expenses. The difference is then uh, net income. This format is primarily used by service firms. Here's an example of a single step income statement. You can see that revenues and gains, you know, which we'll learn about later, are all listed together. Same with expenses. Let me point out uh, one area of the presentation that uh, some students struggle with. Often when we re uh, report financial statements, if we have a list of common accounts like revenues and expenses, we will list them all in one column and carry the total out to the far column. That does not mean, uh, the columns don't mean debit and credit in this case, not when we're presenting the financial statements. A multi-step income statement still lists revenues and expenses, but it separates operating revenues and expenses from non-operating revenues and expenses, as well as divides the accounts into important subtotals that highlight areas of importance for investors and creditors. The subtotals include gross profit and operating income. Here is an example of the multi-step income statement. You can see the different subtotals listed. Again, you will see uh, uh, items on an inner column being subtotaled and then that amount being carried to the outer column. Again, that does not mean debit or credit, so please remember that. Now let's look at the multi-step income statement more closely. The multi-step income statement starts with the calculation of net sales revenue. No other revenue is included in this section. So sales revenue is reported first, then sales returns and allowances and sales discounts are deducted to arrive at net sales revenue. The next important uh, subtotal is gross profit. This is calculated by taking net sales revenue minus costs of goods sold. At this point, costs of goods sold is the only expense deducted in this section. You recall that gross profit is the amount that inventory was sold for more than the cost of inventory. The next section lists all of, our oper all of the operating expenses of a business. Notice that not all expenses are listed here because not all expenses relate to operations. The most notable expense that doesn't belong in this section is interest expense because interest expense relates to how a business finances its operation, not operates it. So here, operating expenses are deducted from gross profit to arrive at operating income. Operating income has a few different names that you might hear from time to time. It is uh, also known as income from operations or EBIT. EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes. In fact, when we look back at the multi-step income statement, you'll see that about the only things that remain are interest and taxes. Operating income is one of the most important pieces of financial data for investors and creditors because it tends to be the most, uh, re it tends to be more repeatable than net, net income which may include some one-time events. Therefore, it has a higher predictive value, and that is important to investors. The next section of the income statement reports non-operating revenues and expenses. These items are either one-time amounts, like gain on sale of land or loss from earthquake damage, or items not part of central operations, like interest revenue, which is earned by making a loan, or interest expense which is incurred by financing assets with debt. This section is sometimes known as the other section. So here, other revenues and gains are added to operating income, and other expenses and losses are deducted from operating income. This gives us a new subtotal called income before taxes. The final section before we arrive at net income or at least the final section for an accounting principles course, is the income tax expense section. 
This expense is reported separately from all other expenses because it's the expense that managers have the least control over. So income tax expense is deducted from income before taxes to arrive at net income. So which format is better? Well, it depends. The single step is easier to read and understand. For service firms, which don't have gross profit, and there isn't a lot of benefit from distinguishing between operating and non-operating activities, it's the simple way to express profitability. But there are some drawbacks. In the example, this firm earned $80,000 of net income on $303,000 of revenue. But the question is, how repeatable is that next year? You know, let's answer that by looking at the multi-step format. The multi-step format gives us better information about gross profit and operating income. That is why non-service firms use this format. Notice that although the company had $80,000 of net income from $200,000 of net sales revenue, operating income was only $45,000. In fact, 80,000 net came from the non-operating section. If you recall, this company had a $100,000 gain on the sale of land. How repeatable is that? Could they just sell land at a profit each year into perpetuity? No, they can't. And that's why the multi-step uh, format breaks out the different types of accounts, account data, so investors and creditors can make more informed and better decisions. And that concludes this short video on the multi-step income statement.